I assume you saw uh, Triumph of the Will. Um, I think I mentioned the other day, Lenny Arifishtal only died about four years ago uh, at age 102. And she did interviews uh, uh, and just looked at back on that regime as that she was a professional and uh, she, did, she did a good job and her, her employers, in this case Adolf Hitler, were pleased with her work. Uh, what's interesting about the film, among you know, the many things and, and some of the themes I'll touch on and, and you're reading about, uh, is that, I mean, it's, it's a combination of the, of the kind of medieval and the very modern, I mean, because Hitler, like Mussolini, used, uh, used modern technology. Uh, Germans who could barely afford to eat had radios and listened to speeches of the Führer, and, and it was the same thing in, in, uh, uh, in Italy with, uh, with Mussolini. Uh, and, uh, well, you saw the images of, of kind of uh, medieval Nuremberg, uh, which, of course, no longer exists, medieval Nuremberg, or not much of it, uh, and, and the kind of modern, uh, modern technology of the whole thing. I mean, Hitler, Hitler liked airplanes. He liked to fly around, and, 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 and for all of the kind of images of the, of the German warrior as kind of a medieval, uh, medieval person you know, di diving into, you know, into frozen Pomeranian ponds and things like that, uh, it was the terrifyingly modern is, of course, apparent, too. And, and, uh, and if you wanted the be most ter a chilling example of the modern, of course, would be the, the assembly line, the transformation of the assembly line uh, into, uh, into mass murder, uh, the assembly line uh, uh, um, uh, in, the, in the death camps. If you've been, anyone here been to Auschwitz? I've been to Auschwitz, I've been to Dachau also a long, long time ago, but Auschwitz uh, uh, fairly recently. One of the most chilling things about Auschwitz, actually, I mean, the sheer, you know, just, uh, it's just <coughs> beyond anything, but it's, it's the Commandant's house, because the Commandant's house has little swings out behind it, and that's where the commandant lived. And his wife said this was the happiest time of their lives. And the, so the little children were playing in the in, in the garden uh, on the swings, uh, and there's a big wall there, but not a huge wall. And the crematoriums are on the other side in that part. That's at Auschwitz, not at Birkenau, which was it's a couple kilometers away. And that life went on in that way as this sort of assembly line. Uh, uh, mass, mass murders of millions and millions of, uh, of people uh, there. Uh, I, uh, Hungarian Jews outnumbered um, uh, Polish Jews, exterminated Auschwitz just barely, but that's because at the end of the war, the Hungarians were, were sending just huge trainloads of people to, to be exterminated there. Anyway, um, so uh, I want today to talk about Adolf Hitler, and, and I will bring in to this, you know, the, some of the themes that, that you're reading about. Uh, um, but just two things at the beginning. Obviously, National Socialism was one variant, uh, certainly the most horrible variant of, of fascism. Uh, and you can put uh, Franco into that mix, but there it's authoritarian, right-wing authoritarian rule. Um, and that, that uh, as you know, it was everywhere. And secondly, uh, that like World War I, I mean, there's no other period of history that has such a, you know, great literature, at least in English, uh, about it. And, and there are uh, a wonderful trilogy by uh, Richard Evans, um, Hitler uh, and the Nazis to 1933, and then second volume was 1933 to uh, the war, to September 1st, 39, and the third is 39 to, um, uh, to the end, to the bunker. Um, and also, uh, there are many biographies of, of Hitler. I've read uh, about three of them, but the best by far is uh, Ian Kershaw's uh, two volumes, very long, but, uh, and I'll be drawing on that um, uh, in part. So um, let's get going uh, on that. Um, there's, a f there's a picture, there's a photo that's not in the book, um, but there's a photo of Hitler reviewing his, his guys. Um, and that particular photo, which was taken about 1927, was, was from a, on a huge field. And so you see Hitler reviewing his guys there. Uh, but what people don't realize is that picture was taken from a huge, you know, the, the, there's lots of other people out there, little groups like the Nazis, might have been a little earlier, and they, uh, they too have their leader, their Führer, and Hitler ends up, the National Socialists ends up, end up, you know, end up winning, but they weren't the only group. Uh, and you know, I'm not a believer in the great person, quote unquote, uh, in, uh, in history. I mean, Hitler did not make the Nazis. Uh, World War I 
prey to the Nazis. A lot of the racism, a lot of the, this, the idea of hygienic, uh, uh, pure, racial purifica purification, all that. I mean, that was all out there, as you know, and I've tried to make, make clear. Uh, but if it would have been a Hitler, there would have been somebody else. And in 1933, when Hitler becomes chancellor, when the other rights, uh, uh, when, well, there are many rights, but when von Papen says, we've got him boxed in now, we can use Hitler for our own, uh, our own uh, goals. Well, how, uh, how incredibly uh, uh, naive uh, uh, that was. But uh, uh, the Nazis uh, uh, must be seen in the context of World War I. They must be, be seen in, in the context of the poisoning of the polit political atmosphere uh, between, between the wars. Um, in, in 1876, Alois Schickelgruber, um, I didn't write it on the board. I sent this stuff around to you today, a lot of it. But not, Schickelgruber is not on it. The list changed his name to Alois uh, Alois, you'd say in French, I don't know what you say in German, Hitler. Um, it, from, it was a peasant family in Lower Australia, uh, Lower Australia, Lower Austria, whoo, uh, bordering on Bohemia. I've been to Lower Australia, I've been to Lower Austria too, but anyway, bordering on, on uh, Bohemia. Thus, his, his, the family's dislike of Czechs and Hitler's uh, particular dislike of Czechs, but he disliked everybody uh, outside of Germans. Um, his father was, was illegitimate, in quotes, um, uh, and ended up with the name of his mother's long deceased wife's father. Uh, Georg Heidler, H-I-E-D-L-E-R, uh, which in 1876 became Hitler, as I said. There was a rumor, even during the 1920s, that, that uh, Hitler's grandfather was Jewish, and this, these rumors circulated in Munich in the 1920s. Hitler was born in Brno am Inn, on the border of, of Germany, that is the, the Austrian-German border, uh, and thus was, uh, this was important in his obsession with, with uh, with uniting the two countries. Um, his father was a, f a customs official, a uh, comfortable kind of lower class uh, uh, existence, but it was not a happy family it was, uh, at all. His father was strict, pompous, proud of his, his, uh, his uh, minimal status, uh, extremely pedantic, and, and, and had a, a violent temper. Uh, he took care of bees with more loving uh, attention than he took care of his family. Um, he managed the family uh, with efficiency, uh, but without love. Uh, Hitler's mother is described by Ian Kershaw as a simple, modest, kindly woman uh, who went to church and was devoted to her two surviving children, Adolf and Paula. Uh, she smothered them uh, with protectiveness. Adolf Hitler feared but did not love his father, but this uh, you know, does not explain the murderous result of the whole thing. Civil servants get moved around, uh, customs people, and he moved to, uh, the family moved to Linz, L-I-N-Z, in Austria, which was a hotbed of anti-Semitism uh, in 1895. Hitler began his schooling at age six. Uh, he viewed uh, Linz as his hometown, uh, and in a not a terribly too, too happy early life, uh, uh, looked back almost nostalgically upon living in, in Linz. But uh, he did not pick up his anti-Semitism in Linz. Uh, he started secondary schooling in 1900, but he was unsatisfactory in math and in natural history. Uh, he didn't like his teachers. Uh, he he um, was uh, in principle respectful, but, but he thought himself above uh, many of them. Um, his, uh, he was badly adjusted. His father wanted him to be a civil servant. He wanted him to follow and be you know, the next in line of the Hitler civil servants. Uh, but uh, Adolf, as you know, resisted. He wanted to be an artist. Uh, and his father said, you will not be an artist as long as I uh, am living. Um, Linz was, uh, besides being a hotbed of anti-Semitism, it was a hotbed of German nationalism, and not just Austrian German-speaking nationalism, but German in general nationalism. Um, his father died in 1903, and then uh, Hitler t uh, hit the academic skids. He failed in math. Uh, he moved to another school 50, year, uh, 50 miles away in a place called Sayer, but, but it wasn't any better. Um, and then he took up this sort of l l idle existence. Uh, uh, I mean he painted, he read poetry, uh, he attended the theater. Oh, he, that was one of his great loves. Um, in Linz, uh, 1905, 1907. He had one friend, Auguste uh, Kubisek, uh, who was the son of a upholster, upholsterer, and Hitler dominated him. He needed somebody to listen to him. Uh, and so uh, 
uh, Kubasek uh, was exposed, and I, I suppose willingly, to Hitler's diatribes, his pontification, <coughs> his monologues uh, about virtually uh, everything. He was the classic kind of know-it-all. <coughs> he was pale, uh, thin. Uh, um, he had that, that little mustache uh, that would become bigger. He wore a black coat and a dark hat, and he carried a black cane with a pretentious ivory, um, ivory handle. Uh, his great passion was Wagner, um, uh, who, who those of you who know about music know that Wagner wa was, uh, was a raving anti-Semite, um, and um, as well in ar as art and architecture, uh, about which he claimed to know a, a great deal. He wanted to begin his artistic career at the Academy in Vienna, um, and his mother had fallen ill with cancer uh, 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 and, and, and soon died. She died in 1907. This struck him as a bolt out of, the, out of the blue, he remembered. He applied for the Academy in Vienna, and to his horror, he was turned down. He went to Vienna anyway in February 1908, hoping to become an architect. Uh, he said later, I owe it to that period that I grew hardened. Uh, he lived in Vienna from 1908, February, until May 1913. He said later, after the war, uh, during his political uh, ascent, that it was during that period that, quote, my eyes were open to the two menaces of which I had previously scarcely known the word, uh, the names, Marxism and Jewry, the Jews. He, uh, and this appears in Mein Kampf, uh, his, uh, My Struggle, uh, which he wrote, you know, when he was in Landsberg Prison. I even visited his cell once uh, after the, the ill-fated Beer Hall Putsch. Uh, in, in Munich uh, in 1923. Uh, but this was out of, uh, out of retrospect. There is really no evidence that he had become uh, a raging uh, anti-Semite before 1914. Yet, I mean, anti-Semitism was, 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 was so prevalent uh, in Australia. And Karl Luger, who was the, uh, you know, the mayor of, 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 uh, uh, of Vienna, whom I mentioned before, uh, was uh, one of the worst in that period, and, and, and he, I've uh, given this chilling quote before, but I'll say it again, he's the one who said, I decide who is a Jew. Uh, and, and the liberalism that had been Vienna in the earlier period was uh, hardened, like Hitler became hardened, uh, into um, uh, just a vast, uh, uh, vast uh, uh, intolerance. But at the time he said that, that, that these two menaces uh, were known to him. He was struggling. Uh, uh, he wanted to be, uh, to be the man uh, uh, in, uh, in leadership of the German right. And so he was, in saying this, uh, if you believe Kershaw, and I do on this, uh, and on much more, uh, that this was a fabrication, uh, that the anti-Marxists, the anti-socialists, and subsequent anti-communists after 1917, that was there. And his long diatribes in this sort of shabby rooming house where they would sit around and finally you can imagine one by one people just getting tired of listening to Adolf and going up to their miserable little rooms to get some sleep were against the socialists. And the, S the, 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 the Austrian socialists, like the German SPD uh, counterparts, had long marches uh, uh, through the streets of Vienna on behalf of workers' rights, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, 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 and Hitler would stand on the porch of this rooming uh, house and simply hate hate them as uh, they went, uh, went, went went back, but went by. Um, but yet, I mean, Vienna w was a huge melting pot of this this uh, enormous empire. There were all sorts of people besides German speakers who lived in Vienna, and many of the German speakers uh, were Jews. Uh, uh, Freud among them. I've, I've been to Freud's uh, r r uh, almost bizarrely uh, recreated. Um, uh, uh, office there uh, in Vienna, but it, it, it had a, a, a Jewish population was about 2% of the population. In 1910, it was 175,000 people in Vienna, or about then it grew to 8.6% uh, of uh, uh, the population. And later, uh, when in, in Hitler's speeches, thundering speeches, over the top speeches, uh, he um, uh, saw them as, as, as uh, uh, as Jews as, as capitalist exploiters of, of, of true Germans, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but this, this, this came, uh, uh, came, came uh, uh, later. Um, Luger, by the way, anticipated Hitler 
and lots of other people by saying in, in 1890 the quote that the Jewish problem quote unquote would be solved if all the Jews were placed on a large ship and sunk at sea. But when, when, Paul, when, when Adolf Hitler lived with Kubitschek in, in this rooming house and, and, and went to the theater uh, with him, uh, he was not yet thinking of politics. What he wanted to do was become this famous artist. And, and he, it is true that he painted postcards for tourists, uh, which he sold to kind of keep himself afloat. A, a, a um, Kubitschek was a, was a piano player. So the room, there was two beds and a piano, and that was about it. And so uh, sometimes you can imagine Kubitschek playing the piano just to try to tune out Adolf, but he was rather lo loyal to him. Uh, Hitler began to, to write a play, he went to the theater, as I said, and he got a little bit of inherited money after his parents died. He had little interest in women, and of course one of the sort of prevalent rumors is that, that he was impotent, uh, though he, as you all know, surely he would marry Eva Braun uh, in, uh, in um, the bunker uh, before they uh, uh, took cyanide pills and killed themselves, as the Russian tanks uh, could almost be heard rumbling above. Uh, we, we know of no sexual experience um, that he had. Uh, he described the ideal woman, quote, as a cute, cuddly, naive little thing, tender, sweet, and stupid. Uh, and of course, uh, like Mussolini, who was a uh, you know, notorious uh, a flanderer and, and, and used to brag uh, uh, tirelessly about his sexual exploits, uh, both Hitler and Mussolini believed that women, uh, uh, his place was in the home, uh, turning out uh, baby boy soldiers, uh, and, 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 and not in the factories. And of course, one of the ironies is, is during the Second World War that, that women uh, are increasingly doing jobs that Hitler uh, and Mussolini uh, thought were inappropriate uh, simply because the men were, were dead. Uh, but um, anyway, so he was prudish, um, seemingly repelled by sex, although fascinated uh, uh, by it. Um, and, and one of the points that Kershaw makes is that Kubitschek's uh, recollections, along with that of, 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 of Hitler's uh, sister Paula, uh, give us a sense of, of some of the things that would remain characteristic of Hitler until uh, his much deserved end. Uh, basically, uh, he was lazy, um, that uh, he was manic at times. There would be these bursts of wild enthusiasm for something. He would, uh, during the war, he would, he would demand that the generals place maps in front of him, then he would make the decisions uh, as the generals secretly moaned about, uh, he considered himself an expert in military affairs as well. Uh, there was a, a pathological sense of reality and, 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 and a sense of proportion uh, and a vindictiveness that, that, as most of you that followed this at all uh, would know, kept the Russian invasion, stalled it as he punished the uh, Yugoslavs. Uh, uh, poured troops in Yugoslavia to, to slaughter people and then uh, uh, delayed the, the famous uh, uh, invasion of, of the Soviet Union in, uh, in uh, June 22nd, uh, uh, was it the 21st? I was in Kiev once and the bells were all ringing and I realized that was the, the, the same time that the German planes had, had, had first, uh, 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 first arrived. Um, uh, but uh, you know, his intolerance, his, his flashes of anger, his tediousness, uh, uh, his sense of predestined greatness, it was all there in the shabby little room, rooming house. Um, and um, the sense of frustration uh, that, uh, um, that his genius wasn't recognized, his genius wasn't recognized. But, but there is no evidence of tirades against Jews uh, that would uh, uh, come, uh, uh, come later. Um, a friend, another friend of his, a guy called uh, Hanish, um, about whom, whom I know nothing, um, said that uh, a, this was after Kubitschek had disappeared from Vienna. In those days, Hitler was by no mean a Jew hater. He became one afterwards. Uh, and in the words of Kershaw, the First World War, one, World War made, uh, made Hitler possible. And in 1920, he, he said for the first time in print, Jews are to be exterminated. And this is after the foundation of the German Workers' Party in early in 1919. And of course, it's that party that, that, would, become, uh, that, that would become the Nazis. Now, there is a picture that may have been doctored 
uh, and that I, I apparently is no longer in the second edition, it should be, it was in the first edition, uh, of the war starting in, 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 in Munich. And I, I think I have mentioned this uh, before, and it, it's a crowd scene, and people are, are uh, I mean, the war has been announced, the war is not in Munich, but all these people are, are around the hotel, the, the town hall, and they're uh, just exuberant. And you can see the smiling Hitler, beaming, happy, fulfilled. You know, he's going to fight for, fight for German nationalism. Um, and he did fight in the war. Uh, he was one of the guys. Um, he, w he was a, a comrade because he, he was wounded twice. He was a runner in the war. He carried messages uh, from, uh, uh, from officers uh, to, uh, to the trenches. And then he not literally ran, but you know, kind of carried them. But they, they called them uh, runners. Um, and so after the war, he emerges as, as, do, as do troops uh, demobilized uh, in every country facing the challenges of, of an uncertain future. And, and nowhere was that future arguably more uncertain than uh, in, in Germany. Um, now, not all veterans of the, the fight in, uh, of the German uh, war cause in World War I, of course, turned to far-right pol politics. Uh, the, the SPD, the Socialist Veterans Organization, was the largest of them all. Um, yet, uh, there are just an enormous continuities between those German uh, soldiers who returned from the war uh, with their weapons uh, in their houses, uh, joining the Free Corps, the Freikorps. Uh, they kept on marching, they kept on training in their basements, uh, and they would uh, uh, come back and therefore be exposed to all of these currents the sense of betrayal, again, as I've said before, this is the third time, but how do you explain to the folks back home that you've lost the war when your troops are way inside of France? They're not perched on the, the frontier, they're way inside. So it's got to be somebody's fault. So whose fault is it? It's the Jews, and it's the socialists, um, and it's the Weimar Republic. And so these themes come together, and that's a constant theme. Hitler, uh, Hitler believed if you told people the same lies over and over and over again, that, 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 that they would believe them. This happens in our country, too. But in, in Hitler's case, the lies were even more uh, uh, pernicious. And so the revisionism becomes you know, an official policy of all of these right-wing groups, of all of them. But the thing that's really just incredible is that the people have memories of Hitler, and when you see pictures of him, this kind of pauvre type, I guess you'd say in French, you know, a sad sack, uh, you know, wearing ill-fitting clothes and, 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 and uh, did not have friends. Kubitschek had disappeared. I had no idea where he, uh, what happened to him. Um, and, and who had big hopes for himself that could never possibly be fulfilled. And the idea of this, those of you who have, who have partied in Munich, you know, on the tour or something like that, I partied in Munich, I was about 20 years old. We went to these places, and, and uh, uh, but, but you remember, when you go into these big places like the Hofbra House, which is one of the worst, and these other places, uh, it is hard to imagine, I mean, this is where the right-wing groups met, that all of a sudden this, this kind of sad sack guy could jump or be lifted on a table, he wasn't terribly athletic, and suddenly, have people listening to every word that he said for hours, for hours. And those speeches, if you've ever heard you know, his speeches, if your German is really good and mine is terrible, it barely exists, uh, it, it, people would listen on the radio and he would build up with this, just this, this crescendo of denouncing the will to power, my struggle, our struggle, the German people's struggle those who have destroyed us, those who signed on the dotted line the war guilt clause that said that Germany started it all. We will get them back. He says in 1925 when Mein Kampf is published, isn't it 25? I think it's 25. He says we will kill the Jews. He says we will expand elbow room, living space, that we will expand to the east. He says this. You could buy copies of, of Mein Kampf in, in, in Manhattan. You could buy, you buy copies of it in, in, in uh, Melbourne. You could buy copies of it anywhere. It was trans translated into in a variety of languages. 
And it was all there from the beginning. And, and the, the consistency in what Hitler was telling uh, was there all the way through. It was there all the way through. The concrete plans for the extermination of the Jews, as well as the gypsies, and of gay people as well. Uh, th this, these concrete plans will uh, come later. Dachau, uh, in 1933, was built with Himmler in charge, uh, primarily to put communists uh, in Dachau. And then later, uh, and Jews, many Jews were communists, uh, and later you know, other people. And I went to Dachau when I was your age, and uh, I remember seeing an old guy um, working in the fields right outside the wall. And he was old enough that that guy owned that farm back in night from, you know, during the war. And people knew, I'll come back to that in a minute. They knew, and you try to think, what did he think when he saw the people come in? What did he think when the smoke rose up? What did he think? They knew. They knew, and they didn't care. Point. Now, if Hitler's themes barely changed, uh, it raises some very important questions. Who first supported Hitler? Um, Hitler's support, and I do write about this a little bit, that the, the role of the economic crisis cannot be underestimated. The inflation statistics, you will not want to commit those to memory, but are, those are unbelievable. The only case I know that's vaguely like that, of course, is Zimbabwe uh, uh, in, in the Mugabe uh, uh, period. But this is even worse, uh, if that is possible. And middle class people who had to pawn armoire, you know, chess, drawers, silver that had been in their family for years, in order to have enough to eat, they wouldn't forget and they blamed and they hated. It's the fault of the Allies, it's the fault of the Jews, it's the fault of the Socialists, it's the fault of the Communists, it's the fault of Weimar. And they first flocked to Hitler. The middle classes do. Now if this sounds like an orthodox Marxist interpretation, that's what the Marxist orthodox say, and they're right. Now big business did not flock to Hitler. Big business wanted the destruction of Weimar. They helped make Hitler possible. Only one big businessman gave Hitler a lot of money. He got a lot of small donations. But pretty soon he gets started introduced to the right people, the right cocktail parties. They thought he was vulgar. Quick story. I had a colleague who died decades ago, who was very nice to me when I came here, who was a German. Uh, diplomatic historian called Hans Gottke. And he left, he wasn't Jewish and he wasn't a communist, that's for sure. Uh, and he left uh, Ger Germany in the, in the, thir the thir mid-30s because he didn't like uh, what was going on. He didn't like what's going on. <coughs> and uh, he got a job translating for the Canadian Olympic team. And I said to him once, did you ever see Hitler? And he said, yes. And he was under the stadium in Berlin. And like any big stadium, you know, you've got You've got space underneath. A lot of places they have you know, batting cages. Sometimes there's a baseball stadium or something like that. But he was down there. He was supposed to meet the Canadian Olympic team. And all of a sudden he heard this enormous roar of machinery as you know, machine gun carrying uh, vehicles are coming in. And by incredible coincidence, he had a couple pillars here. And just about where Leslie is, there was Adolf Hitler. There was Adolf Hitler. He was scared because there were machine guns all over. He just stood there frozen. I mean, he wasn't, you know. What, they've got him down? No, but he just was standing there. And I said, what, what did you think? What did you think? You're 15 yards away from Adolf Hitler, less than that. And he said, I had a weird reaction. He was vulgar. He was the Austrian corporal. He sneezed, and he blew his nose on his sleeve. That's what Gotsky remembered. Now, big business. Uh, Gotsky was a moderate. You know, political, uh, you know, he was not at all, I mean, not at all Nazi, but, uh, but he, and he also did, he would believe in the Weimar Republic. Uh, he was a very good guy, very kind of aristocratic guy. He was a Rhinelander. He, uh, but his reaction was the same as big business, except that they want, big business wanted to destroy Weimar. 
but the reaction was that Hitler is a commoner. He's vulgar. He's a, uh, we've got him locked in, they said in 1933. We've got him boxed in. We can use him to our advantage and then have a military dictatorship. When von Stauffenberg tries to kill Hitler and puts a bomb under the table and it blows up but doesn't kill Hitler because of a big old German wooden barrier it was the, 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 the table uh, uh, stood on, you know, he wasn't trying to bring parliamentary regime back to Germany. He wanted a military dictatorship. Um, but, but, you know, he, but Hitler was supported by the, by, 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 uh, the middle classes disproportionately at the, at, at the beginning. But by all classes, uh, people supported him. Workers less so. But they break in 1933 to destroy the Union. They destroy the Communist Party. They use the Reichstag fire, which is actually set by the guy, probably now we think the Dutch guy, whom I write about in there. They destroy the unions. They destroy the possibility of resistance. But lots of workers were there, Sig Heil, too. But less so than the other classes. What about religion? Hitler, Hitler was a southerner. He never liked Berlin at all. He wanted to raise it or, or, and then, then build this sort of you know, Art Deco uh, monument of his, his own planning. But he was, a, you know, he, was a, he was a southern guy. But one of the places he first does very well is Schleswig-Holstein, which was part of it, what used to be Danish, and is totally Protestant. Um, the Catholic Church rings the bell and reads what Hitler wants read from the sermons. They're happy to have, uh, uh, have Hitler there, uh, as are the... Um, you know, as, as, as are the, the Protestants. There, there's uh, uh, no doubt uh, about that. But the, these kinds of, you know, the, the fascism is in the air all over the place. And the kinds of the, the, the main elements of fascism that, that, that I list if you th in that book, if you think about them, they all apply to Hitler and to the people who followed him. Anti-communist, anti-social, uh, socialist, anti-Weimar, uh, the role of the economic crisis with long, long memories and hating the Allies and hating the Jews and hating the socialists. Uh, violence, the, the, you know, the, the Nazis were, uh, and other fascist groups were better uh, at saying whom they were against than what they wanted. A lot of them say, uh, what they want is ultra-nationalism. What they want is the totalitarian state and the destruction of parliamentary rule. What they want is a dictator. Uh, they want a Cadillo, as, as Franco was. They want a Duce, as, as, as uh, Mussolini called himself. They want a Führer. Uh, they want a leader who incarnates in that mystical body, as they would view it, the aspirations of the German people. And part of what, whom you were is who you're excluding. You have a Volkish community in the perverse biological you know, racism of, of these people and other people who aren't in it, too bad for them. If they are work shy, Germans who don't want to work, then they're not really part of the, of, of the uh, uh, Volkish community. I decide who's a Jew and who isn't. That's what Luger said. Hitler says, and this is the horror of it all, we decide who will live and who will die. And when they're using euthanasia as a tool to, to kill people who are mentally handicapped, and even some people who are physically handicapped, and pretty soon in the late 30s, the Germans say, wait, these are Germans. You know, if they're Jews who made them German, we don't consider ourselves German, that's OK. Get rid of them. So they pull back on that. But it's, that's there from the beginning. Ultra-nationalistic, ultra-anti-parliamentarianism. You want the guy. He's going to represent you, and he's going to tell you what to do. But they didn't, and, and the terror is there. I mean, the violence is there. The Gestapo. Uh, you know, people, there are hundreds of thousands of denunciations. If you denounce somebody, you could be setting them to torture and, and, and their death. There's no question about that. And there are denunciations all the time. Hey, my neighbor, he, I think he's Jewish. Uh, I know my neighbor down the hall. I know he was a big guy in the, S, you know, in the German Socialist Party, the SPD. I know that the, the butcher around the street, you know, I might want his store because I'm a butcher too. I know he was a communist activist until 1933. And you send in denunciations. They got him all the time. They got him all the time. Here's a quote, somebody describing one of the Gestapo offices and the bureaucratization of terror. And it's grimy, uh, this is a quote, grimy uh, corridors, officers furnished with Spartan simplicity, offices furnished with Spartan simplicity, threats, kicks, troops chasing chained men up and down the reaches of the building, shouting, 
rows of girls and women uh, standing with their noses and toes against the wall, overflowing ashtrays, portraits of Hitler and his aides, the smell of coffee, smartly dressed girls working at high speed behind typewriters, girls seemingly indifferent to the squalor and agony about them, stacks of confiscated publications, printing machines, books and pictures, and Gestapo agents asleep on the table. Nobody had any illusion about what was going on. And they didn't just rule through terror. You know, the SS, by the way, the SS, everybody knows about the SS. I mean, they destroyed the SA. They, Ernst Röhm challenges Hitler, and the night of the long knife, they, they wipe them all out. The SS was a form of sort of social mobility. For people, these young guys come back after the war, there's no work, and pretty soon in the 20s, they get a SS, you got a uniform. You can go beat the hell out of, out of uh, communist Jews or anyone else, and, and there's no, the judges are all uh, Nazi sympathizers or right-wing sympathizers. They were all trained in the empire. Uh, you can you know, kill somebody and you'll be out of jail in, 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 a, in, a, in a very short matter of time. I mean, you're, you're working with impunity, uh, especially in Prussia, where, where Goebbels is the minister of, uh, uh, of the interior. Um, or is it Goring is the minister of interior in, in, in Prussia? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, it is all routinized. It, it, it is all there. But they don't rule just through terror. And that's what I did not emphasize enough in what, you're, um, in, in what you've read, and it's going to be in the next uh, edition. L the Hitler promises order. And order is zero tolerance on petty crime, for example. Uh, and they have police who are called the Kripo, uh, appropriately enough in English translation, but uh, uh, K-R-I-P-O. And they are so your basic police. They are not the Gestapo. But they go out, and, and, and people who are lounging about, who are work shy, that's a dangerous thing to be, work shy, uh, you know, petty criminals, people who are hungry, who are, who are stealing apples off of fruit stands, things like that, they go out and they, they make war on them. Uh, and the German population not enthusiastically uh, overall uh, as, uh, as a whole. Uh, the war on crimes is something they like. Now also there's the economy. Now Hitler got credit for many German people. Uh, for having revived the, friend, the, the German economy. How does he do that? He does it by starting by violating the statutes of the Treaty of Versailles, and they're, they're preparing for war. He's preparing for war all the way through. If the Rhineland occupation, the French and the Belgians had, had, had put up a fuss, it's possible that the whole thing could have been stopped there. It's possible. The generals are always saying, Mein Führer, you know, we're not really ready yet for war. Uh, while he is, is uh, freezing, freezing the, uh, his, his opponents, and they capitulate one time after another, and the famous story of Neville Chamberlain who'd returned bringing peace in his time after having sold out Czechoslovakia. But the German economy does revive. There's still huge gaps between, obviously, the wealthy and people who aren't wealthy, uh, uh, enormous gaps. But the German economy, and he takes credit, does revive because of the same thing that happens in the United States in World War II, because you're turning out, transforming uh, the war economy, and that's exactly what happens. So he takes credit for this. And there are a lot of flashy gestures. The VW, I went around Europe in a VW with a couple of my friends sleeping on beaches, a little VW, the Volkswagen. But only one of them was ever produced. He promises the German people a Volkswagen, but only one model ever it comes off, you know, for the press and all that. The Autobahn. They're going to have roots Autobahn all over. Now there are in Germany and people driving 500 miles an hour uh, with impunity. Uh, there are only 500 uh, kilometers or miles of, of uh, is it transferred in, in miles of uh, Autobahn done by the time he's finished. Strength through joy. He announces a program that, that Germans who have never been on vacation, ordinary working class Germans can go on vacation. Some people did go on vacation. They all get drunk on, on, on cruise boats and, 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 uh, uh, all over the place, and, and, but hardly anyone gets to go. Uh, but he gets credit for it. That, so he seemed to be producing. He seemed to be producing. And in a country in which anti-Semitism, uh, despite the fact that Jews were terribly assimilated, uh, were, uh, was endemic, uh, they like the fact the Jews are disappearing. They like it, and they know it. And it's sheer nonsense to, to think that people didn't know what was going on, because as these trials are put in the papers all the time, so-and-so has been condemned being sent away to, to Dachau because of anti-state behavior, anti-German behavior, you name it. People know. They have no doubts about it. Where do they think the trains are going? They can kind of imagine uh, uh, 
you know, where are these people coming from? What, when all the Polish workers are coming in, being brought in as sort of slave, la slave labor, the ones who haven't been destroyed, uh, when they're coming to work in the factories, where do these people think their families were? Well, they're all dead. Uh, that's why Ordinary Men is such a chilling book, because it, how these people, these, you know, this police officer brigade in, in, uh, in Hamburg, how these people could put bullets in the, in the backs of the heads of old ladies and little children in the, in the killing fields of, around Wurz or anywhere else in Poland. It's just an extraordinary story. People knew. Not everybody knew, but they knew. They, they knew. Uh, and, and for people who wanted order, this was their idea. This was the racial idea of order. The universities, what happens to the universities? Well, certain fields do very well. Racial hygiene, they esta establish chairs in racial hygiene. A German folklore, they establish chairs in, in German folklore. Physics does very well for obvious reasons. Physics equals, equals rockets. Uh, military history, chairs in military history. Chairs in, 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 in German history. Chairs in, particularly in German medieval history. But, but anything else, you know, your basic history, uh, um, German literature, for example, uh, uh, it doesn't do very well. Uh, there was a famous headline that, I, that is in, in the book uh, uh, saluting the fact that people were, there were less visits to libraries and people were checking out books in, in far fewer numbers than they did before. Um, how do they pull this off? They pull it off through sort of the atomization of society. Uh, and that one of the ways that there's a really wonderful book called The Nazi Seizure of Power, uh, written about a town near Hanover. Uh, and he changes the name of the town. But the people were so proud of that book in the 1960s, in 1970s, they put stacks up and say, that's us. That's us who are beating up the Jews. That's us who are beating up the communists. We are so proud. Uh, it's a very good book, William Sheridan and the Nazi Seizure of Power. Uh, there's another good book by Rudy Koshar, a friend of mine at, at Wisconsin, on, on uh, Marburg, on the town of Marburg. What they do is they get Nazis into every voluntary association, basically, uh, and they take them over. And so what you have is the atomization of society. That what Ian Kershaw calls going to the Führer. Only thing left is the family. You protect yourself in the family. Or you thrive in the family. But you're in the family. And your, your children are in Hitler Youth. Uh, you, um, uh, uh, there is no possible organized way of opposition. Soccer clubs, football clubs, everything is, 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 is uh, part of the atomization because it's been taken over by the Nazis. There is almost no resistance in Germany. I'll talk a little bit about this next time. Uh, because this was a regime that's capable, as they did in Dusseldorf, of, of hanging 16-year-old boys uh, because they listened to Benny Goodman or were considered to be slackers or work shy. There's, the, there's that phrase again. So this, atomiz this atomization uh, of, of, of German society makes all of this possible. And the most, you know, when Stauffenberg places this bomb and the thing, you know, thing blows up and it doesn't kill Hitler, Hitler amused himself and his friends by, by uh, all the people and all the families of people involved. Uh, they filmed them being stro slowly strangled with, with wire. And they laughed as they, as they watched the film. But the most amazing, chilling thing, even more than that, is that Germans pour into the street in 30 or 40 different cities as bombs have been raining down all the time. And they thank God, mein Gott, you know, you saved our Führer. It, how, that's extraordinarily difficult to explain. And by 1944, the armies are full of old men and, 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 and boys, because you know, basically everybody else is dead. And, the, and they, they keep fighting. They fight until, uh, you know, with astonishing and foolish courage, uh, until uh, the bitter, bitter end. They believed, not everybody believed, uh, and there will be a revival of, but you know, even you know, the German Federal Republic was just replete with, with, with uh, you know, former, uh, uh, very proud former Nazis who take, you know, hugely important positions in, uh, in power after that. And of course, the good old Americans, uh, uh, you know, help a lot of these uh, Nazi war criminals escape to Paraguay and places like that in exchange for information about, about you know, communist uh, movements and that sort of thing. They believed, they believed, and they believed, not everybody believed, uh, but, but, but that's one of the, the scariest things about the whole thing, is that it was Sig Heil until the end. Again, not for everybody, not for everybody, uh, but for some social classes and others. It was, a, and, and you find this in other countries, and I'll talk a little bit about that when I talk, I guess I'll talk mostly about, about France, um, about France uh, uh, next time. Um, so, um, you know, Hitler, uh, you know, Hitler gives them basically 
what uh, the German people what they want. And, and his prestige, every time he stands down uh, Britain, the British and the French, every time that he pulls this off, uh, the occupation of the Rhineland, uh, the, the, uh, the absorption of the Sudeten, uh, part of Bohemia, and then they just take over the whole country, the Anschluss, where he's greeted enthusiastically by the crowds. You can see these photos of, of the adoring Viennese crowds. Uh, you know, where was the Vienna of, 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 uh, of, of calm concerts? It became the Vienna of Wagner. It became the, uh, uh, the Vienna of, of, uh, of, of saluting Hitler and then going out and, and, and beating up and killing Jews. Something like 100 Jews are, are, are murdered in, in, in Vienna. Uh, when Hitler arrives uh, to celebrate uh, the, the arrival of, of uh, Adolf Hitler. Uh, it, it's they too, you know, they, they believed in one of the, you know, the dark secrets, of course, was the Nazi past of the former Secretary General of the United Nations, Kurt Waldheim, and that came out, all this came out before, you know, before most of you were reading newspapers, some of you were reading them, uh, uh, back then, because it was about, what, 15 years ago or something like that, uh, the, people, uh, the, the people knew. Um, so those are the really the, the big points uh, that, I, that, I, that I wanted to make. And when, um, uh, when you were reading uh, German women or German men sitting waiting to get their hair done, uh, when you read, uh, you read a popular newspaper which, or a popular magazine, all of which had, had articles about, about Hitler and this sort of entourage and all that, and you read a, uh, you know, a cheery headline such as, Gas Masks for Children Now Readied. Uh, uh, you sort of nodded and said, yeah, yeah, we'll be ready for uh, the struggle because what happened was Mein Kampf, the struggle, uh, Hitler's book Mein Kampf became perceived of and adopted by uh, the majority of people uh, uh, in Germany and they, you know, uh, tragically enough, uh, they remain with, um, with Adolf Hitler uh, and, uh, and the Nazis until, until the, uh, the very, very uh, a bitter end. And of course, it's important to see the context is that in all of these places, whether it, you're talking about Brussels, whether you're talking about Amsterdam, whether you're talking about, uh, uh, whether you're talking about Prague, what, what, uh, any place you're talking about in, in Europe, or Oswald Mosley strutting through Hyde Park with his, his uh, uh, little Nazi-ling followers. Uh, Hitler was just the, the, the most violent, uh, uh, the most egregious, the most horrible, the most tragic uh, example of what was a general uh, a phenomenon throughout the entire period uh, at different degrees of success uh, during uh, the 20s and 30s. And so the war that began in, 1940, uh, in 1914 basically does not end uh, until, uh, at least in Europe, in, in, until the, uh, the defeat uh, finally of, uh, of, of Germany and the death of Adolf Hitler, uh, still at a relatively young age in the bunker in Berlin.